Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. I am here with Doug Gomes. Welcome back, Doug. Thank you. We were here. So nice. Yeah, we were here yesterday in the same uh, time slot. And maybe you can introduce yourself for people who might just be coming in that didn't see you yesterday. Well, my name is Douglas. You can call me Doug. <laughs> okay, I was like, oh, <laughs> does it have to be Douglas? <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, you guys can call me Doug. And I'm a web designer, illustrator, and for the time uh, I like to be in the ocean surfing. Yeah. And I'm here today to share a little bit of my drawing for a t-shirt we're going to be making until tomorrow, mm -hmm. hopefully. It's going to be fun. Hopefully. <laughs> I think it will for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's saying hello. We've got Rebecca from New Zealand. Oh, that's awesome. Love that's New Zealand. really cool. Yeah. We All always right. like to see uh, who's the furthest away. So, Rebecca, you might be the furthest away, but let us know where you're all tuning in from. Yesterday, we had a ton of your friends and family yes, coming in. Yeah, they're heavy, yeah. That was so cool. I love seeing the support. Another friend right there, Jared. Oh, cool. What's up, Jared? Montalvo. Yep. Cool name. What's up, Esther? So, if this is your first time here on Adobe Live, we are on Behance. be.net slash live is the best place to watch us. We have a challenge for you today. We love it when you are all creating alongside our designers. So while Doug is creating, we're challenging you to also make an illustration using either Photoshop Sketch, Illustrator Draw, or you could always just use Illustrator or Photoshop uh, on the desktop. But Photoshop Sketch and Illustrator Draw are mobile apps. They're free. They're awesome. You're going to be using Draw. Draw right now, yeah. Awesome. So we'll see that in a second. And if you have any questions, about using the apps, uh, feel free to ask. But the challenge is to make an illustration based off the idea of warm weather, and we have a color palette for you. So go to the challenge tab at be.net slash live. It's right above the chat. Get the color palette and submit that by 4.30. You have about an hour and a half. There'll be a little timer below us right here that will let you know when time is up, and then we will review them. And the winner of the challenge will win a t-shirt with Doug's finished design on it. I'm excited. I'm gonna steal one. I'm gonna get one for myself. It's gonna be good. Super cool. So let's jump into what you were working on yesterday. All right. And walk us through so we can get to where we are today. So rewinding. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically we start with the sketch and I explain a little bit about the process where how I build my sketch mm -hmm. and what I take in consideration, you know, to pick the right idea and you know the concept that I'm gonna actually you know finalize and then so after we were done with that next step was uh, you know trace it basically all the outlines and you know do the line work right. uh, keep it simple and so that way today we could add some more details into it mm -hmm. and then uh, let's work into adding more colors as well so cool so yesterday we did sketch and you did the final lines. Correct, yes. Awesome. Would you mind turning on the sketch layer? Do you still yeah, have yeah, it so yeah, we can definitely. see it? No problem. I can actually turn all the lines off first. Yeah, take us through. And whoa, whoa, whoa. There we go. Whoa. So, okay. So first, uh, I explain a little bit about how I start like pencil and paper yeah, always. Yeah, you had your paper yesterday. It was yeah. all crumpled up. Yeah, <laughs> ugly, but you know, very um, useful. Mm -hmm. So I snap a picture of whatever the idea I picked, you know, the winner idea. Yeah. And then I placed on my artboard, which is this one you guys see. And then if I actually increase the opacity, you guys are gonna see it like very oh, rough sketch right there. It's just yeah. a photo. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of lines there that it's not actually part of the design, but you know, uh, it's just some placements of like where probably I would work something. Oh, on it, I or, didn't realize you that. know, it's almost like guidelines. A yeah. little, I try to, you know, put some words in there. Maybe I would add some more, maybe not. Some, maybe chaos. some stars. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe like some related with Adobe. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, like a collab type of thing. Uh -huh. um, right here on the, the bottom left, I was maybe thinking about putting some palm trees and the initial idea was like coming out of like a hole, like a you know a rip from a shirt, the shirt. But then oh. I ended up changing the idea to be more like in the water, you know, yeah. representing who I am. Right. And then after we were done with that, we start tracing it, 
um, mm -hmm. you know, I lower the opacity and then we start chasing it and doing more like a clean sketch that I call. And then that's, you know, that's what we came up with. Right Super here. clean sketch. Yeah, so it's a little cleaner. I'm and you changed some things too. You added the different pinky. Yeah, I added more like, you know, well, I made a, like a full hand with all the fingers. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and then I give more, you know, depth to it, like more perspective, which gives more movement as well, kind of 3D-ish. Mm -hmm. um, always try to give some uh, movement to my designs. Right, you um, can definitely see that in Doug's Behance portfolio. For sure, yes. You can find that in the info tab. So basically, this is like all the ideas I'm st considering putting it out there. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be all of that in there, mm -hmm. but it just kind of guideline, you know, so I don't forget everything, all the possibilities I can work with. Oh, so you kind of put it all down and then yeah. in your finished piece, yeah. you curate. Yeah, usually, if, let's say I'm going to present a sketch for a client before, you know, finalize our work, I would probably make notes on the side. You know, this is possible, you know, I might put some uh, clouds right here right. or some stars right here, but it doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, use them for sure, you know. Okay. And then once we were done with the sketch, we start the line work, which is this one. Hey, cool. Yeah, we, we put some outline, make it thicker. So those bit. are two different layers. Two different like layers. Three. I try to keep like everything in different layers pretty much. So the main guy, you know, like the line work, right. one layer, then the outline in a different layer, then the, the background elements, which is the bridge at this point, another layer the waves, the water, and another layer as well. And that's it. And the birds. And the birds, yes. yes. And the birds. And then that's where, we, that's where we left off last night. Cool. All right, so what are we going to do today? So today I'm going to actually, I already saw some little things I want to change oh, on the design. Okay, okay. So I'm going to just add a few more details. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to move forward with the more details, the final <laughs> details, right. shading, and also we're gonna pick some color uh, scheme to mm -hmm. work with, and we're gonna add some colors as well. Sweet. And that's it. All today? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we, we're gonna have plenty of time, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. That's the plan. Cool, thank you Voodoo Val for posting Doug's Behance in the chat. Feel free to go check that out and follow and appreciate his work. Uh, just a reminder, you've got about an hour and a half to get those challenge submissions in. And we're also going to be doing a giveaway in about 20 minutes. We've been doing these all day long. Maybe you've seen this before. Love it. Yeah, isn't it awesome? <laughs> we're going to be giving away an awesome Photoshop pillow. All you have to do is be active in the chat when we open up the giveaway. That'll be in about 20 minutes. But uh, we'll let you know then. So on with the show. Awesome. Jump on in. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna fix some stuff right here first. All right. What do you see? What do you not like? Um, I'm gonna redo a little bit of this a little antler right there. Am I gonna just delete it? Okay. I'm gonna. I think I, I wanna add some more like you know, rugged texture in the eye as well. Okay. As well. Um, let's see. You know how the sides here, like how it goes, kind of bumping. Yeah. Get some okay. wrinkles. Yeah. I'm gonna hmm. do that as well. So what about the antler did you not like? Um, I think it was too close uh, from each other. Okay. So I'm gonna move a little bit and probably lower a little bit because of perspective. It's right. supposed to kind of go around and go down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just little things like that. Totally makes sense. And if anyone is new to the stream, <laughs> feel free to say hello and chat. If you're just watching and you don't have an Adobe ID or a Behance portfolio, no worries, you can make one really quick. Just say hello, that is how you're gonna enter the giveaway. So it's always good to make an account so that you can possibly win some goodies. So did you see this monster in the bay since you've been here? I'm the monster. That's true. <laughs> we've seen it here, folks. <laughs> this is his true form. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to just fix a, fix a little bit of the outer stroke and the inner stroke, which I add the, the wrinkles a little bit. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to leave the 
second handler to be part of the shading we're gonna do because actually it's oh. gonna be shaded. It's gonna fill that be filled in of, uh, with black. So. Okay. Gotcha. But another little thing I'm gonna add to it. This is the cables. Oh. oh. So you did some research. You realized maybe that's not exactly what the bridge looks like. Yeah. You know. I actually forgot to put that on, wasn't I? Oh, you just, you <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> you just forgot. Gotcha. Uh, Kathy is asking, I have a Behance account. Do I need to be logged into Behance too? It seems like you're logged in right now. So, great. Also, what's up, Steven? If this is your first time coming in, hello. Thanks so much for being here. We're here pretty much every Tuesday through Thursday on Adobe Live. We've been uh, streaming weekly since Max of 2017, so that was like October. It's been a wild ride. We cover all kinds of different topics. We have illustration, obviously, graphic design. Um, we have a lot of XD and UI interface design. That's really exciting and something that I don't know a lot about, so I yeah. always love watching those. I watched one of those and it was really cool. Yeah, right, and you can all uh, try out Adobe XD, which is an awesome program for building wireframes and kind of learn alongside the experts. Mm, Bruno is wondering, will you export this illustration from Draw to Photoshop um, or Illustrator? So it all depends. Like, um, I personally like to um, use keep everything vector, mm -hmm. so I like to work with vectors. When it, when it comes with, uh, to Illustration, um, I do usually do some kind of illustration on Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But just the possibilities you can have with, um, you know, vector is just like amazing. Like you can do different sizes, don't lose resolution. It's awesome. So I like that because I don't, I rather like do a small document mm -hmm. and then if I need to stretch it out, I'll do it later. And yes, I uh, usually, most of the times, I start on iPad and illustration. And if is there any like final fine details I need to add, like texture, you know, um, you know, any other like that I need to do on computer at right. a font or anything, mm -hmm. I move to Illustrator and I finalize everything on Illustrator, which nice. I'm going to show that tomorrow probably how to do it. Yeah, I think Illustrator is a really great tool, especially if you're making graphics for a t-shirt. I know when I was making t-shirts, we barely worked in Photoshop at all. Yeah. And if you did, then you had to kind of either export it as a TIFF or a bitmap and make sure that it would print right. Yeah. Illustrator was definitely easier for us. Bruno says that he also prefers Illustrator. Nice. It's, um, it's also uh, always good to know how to work with both of them though. You know, I it's, agree. it's so complimentary. Like it's, it, I, I'm always have them on the mm -hmm. whole time. So yeah. I kind of go back and forth and if you need to do something. Yeah, they play nicely together. Yeah. It's getting cool. better and better. Yeah. What's up, Edwin? Thank you for coming to your first live stream. Glad to have you. I'm wondering if you learned Illustrator or Photoshop first. I started with Photoshop first. Me too. And um, it was back then, I think uh, Illustrator wasn't out yet. So I, ha I was using like... Uh, How long ago was this? <laughs> it was like different uh, softwares. Mm -hmm. um, can I mention the names? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I used to use, a, I think it was Freehand back in the days. Mm -hmm. Well, I started with Coral, yeah. Draw, and then I moved to Freehand. Right. And then, you know, Adobe started using, the, you know, multi-softwares, uh, uh, you know, um, where you could copy and paste stuff. So the whole industry moved to, you know, Adobe software. So I started learning you know, yeah, Illustrator yeah. more. Nice. I remember when the feature, uh, uh, how do you call the, um, that you vector everything, the, you click it, it's auto trace. Oh, yeah. When it came out, it came out with the mm -hmm. auto trace, uh, it was a big thing, like for little things, like if you want to get a like icon online and make a vector, mm -hmm. super quick. Yeah. Easy was peasy. A, yeah. That's awesome. That's and scary. even that has come a long way. Yeah. Since then. Sometimes I even use the app, the capture on the oh, phone. Oh, heck yeah. And, you know. All right. Make some thick lines right now. Cool. I like seeing that layer of just your outlines. <laughs> this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it shows that there isn't a thick outline around everything. Yeah. Mostly just the actual outside. Yeah. 
sometimes uh, the, uh, when I'm like doing the line work, I put too much pressure, like in some spots. So I don't even need to put the you know the thick outline. Yeah. To, if you see it, like, it's already done. You know, <laughs> right there on top. So I just try to keep more even, you know, the thickness and everything. All right. I think that's it. Looks good, and if it's not, it can always come back. Yep, and always add come it. back. All right, so let's do the shading now. I'm really excited to see how you do this. Okay, cool. How are you gonna tackle it? All right. So the shading for me, it's kind of like you know, um, it's more like you know. Uh, a try process. I try oh, okay. it, and then if it looks good for me, I'll, I'll leave it. If not, I'll right. keep trying, keep adding like different spots, kind of having in my mind where the light's coming. You know, and cool. this, at this point, the light is going to come from behind. So, Ooh. in the real world, probably you would this whole face of design will be dark. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. So oh, nice. But I'll keep it kind of close to that reality a little bit. Yeah, make it believable. Yeah. Kind of makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. and that'll be kind of spooky, kind of eerie, having the light coming from behind. Yeah. I like that. Martin says that he likes the bridge in the back. It's a good detail. Thank you. I think so, too. It's very San Francisco. There we go. Okay, let's do this. So I create a new layer. That's right, where we're right. going to do the, the shading right now. Okay, and you're using the tapered brush. Yeah, the tapered brush, which, um, if you guys don't know that yet, it's like, gives this effect, you know, like very thin, mm -hmm. you know, edges. Especially at the end. In the ends. And also, um, it, it kind of like cleans out, you know, your stroke path. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. That's really good. Yeah. So basically, how you add the, the shading right here is that every little indent or like, you know, wrinkle, I try to make it kind of go into it a little bit more. And that's what's going to give the feel of the, you know, 3D, the, you know, the perspective. Yeah. So basically, just a quick example, then I'm just going to go like full on working, you know, like this little thing, you know, I okay. made it a little bit more prominent mm -hmm. going inside and then everything that we think could be, you know. Oh. This guy's right here. So see, this, <laughs> this is an example, like, I don't need this. Get out of there. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go. Cool. And um, on the 80s skateboard um, graphics, they have this very solid, like kind of wrinkle shading style. Mm -hmm. So it's just perfect how the app made this tool right here. It's like everything you needed to. You yeah, know, it's like keep it's. Up built for it. Yeah. That's cool. Speaking of skateboarding, uh, Jose wants to know, what was your first job experience in the skateboard industry like? Um, I didn't have much on the skateboarding industry, mm -hmm. like, um, especially because in Brazil, we didn't have like big companies okay. that would actually like look for, you know, illustrators to do that. Um, so we were kind of like, you know, seeing the international, you know, uh, industry, industry, and so I didn't have much uh, opportunity to work with the, the, the skateboard uh, brands. Gotcha. I just used them as a, like reference. Okay, know, so inspiration. It's inspiration. Yes. Yeah. Which is, you know, I was skateboarding and surfing pretty much all week mm -hmm. back in the days. Yeah. So. That's really cool. So it's really a part of you. Yeah. Nice. And didn't you say that you did some custom skateboards, like just for friends? Uh, surfboards. Or, surfboards. Yeah. That's what it. They're different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming from someone who is not board efficient yeah, in like, any way. <laughs> uh, we, um, which is funny, like I posted this uh, really back in the days, I think it was 2008, I don't even know. I did this illustration and then I posted it online and then one blog found an illustration. Mm -hmm. They featured my work like from Brazil. Whoa. If, if you Google it, you're gonna find it. It's pretty cool. Wow. I did it with marker. If you put like a, um, surfboard um, design. Let's see, let's see. The, right there. The, 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 this one? That's cool with the green. Oh, cool. Right there. Let's open it up. 
So we use like uh, Posca, Posca markers mm -hmm. and some like fluorescent, um, if you scroll down all the way this down. This is 2010, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bunch of cool you know, artwork right there. There's a one artist that wow. I forgot to mention yesterday, but it's, uh, Drew Brophy, he's from, mm -hmm. from Orange County. Nice. And uh, it's like, he's the guy on the style of surfboards. Uh, These are crazy. Design. There we go. Oh, here we go. That was gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're even using your real name back in 2010. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So where did you post this online for it to be found? I don't know. I think it was social media, like Facebook, like wow. back in the days. Yeah. That's really um, interesting. Yeah. Super cool. Aaron says that I just posted my submission. I'm determined to get a copy of this art. All right, Aaron, we'll be looking at them in about an hour and 10 minutes. And speaking of deadlines and countdowns, you can see over here, down, over there, that we have the giveaway countdown about eight minutes until we're gonna be giving away this awesome Photoshop pillow. Pillow. Super comfy, very awesome. Would look great on your bed, on your couch, in your dog's bed. It's perfect for a dog. Perfect for my dog. Perfect <laughs> for your dog. Yeah. Because they deserve all the best. My dog loves like a pillow. She, she can't even see a pillow like laying on the couch. Yeah. She goes for it. <laughs> Does she actually put her head on it? She lays like she, you know, makes comfortable. She, oh yeah, like makes a little nest. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they were talking about last stream that my dog loves pillows, like to sleep on with his head like a human. He'll make a pillow out of anything. That's funny. This morning I walked into the bedroom and he was in there just laying with his head on the pillow <laughs> looking at me. It's like, oh, are you a human now? Uh -huh. <laughs> Jan Eric wants to know, are our, are our pillows both Mac and Windows compatible? Yeah, I think so. Let's check, <laughs> let's check the box art. It was made in America. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Should be. Yeah, should be, should be. <clears throat> Maribel's wondering if she can buy the pillow somewhere. I actually really like it. Maribel, if you're ever in Adobe headquarters in San Jose, we do have an Adobe store. You can buy swag there. How does it feel to sleep on this pillow? Martin, I couldn't tell you. Probably really nice. It is very squishy. Ooh, Jamie saying that Illustrator introduced Live Trace in CS2. That's so long ago. Yeah. We're in CC 2018 now. What? My first Adobe product was, I believe it was Photoshop Elements 3. Pointo. I was in middle school and I got it with my tablet. <laughs> it awesome. came free with it, yeah. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. It changed a lot though throughout the years. Oh it yeah. Just getting better, so cool. I agree, I agree. Mirabel, what about the Adobe headquarters in San Francisco? No store here. Yeah, the one in San Jose is the actual headquarters, like the global headquarters. Jan Eric says that if we sleep on this pillow, we will dream in glorious 32-bit RGB. <laughs> That's amazing. Gigabyte dreams. I can see how your process is really just like intuitive. You just are putting things where you think they belong, yeah. erasing them when they don't. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what it is. I tried to, you know. And the the benefit of having this all this in one layer i can actually like erase it easily later so all right desiree wants to know do you have a favorite piece of work that you've done <sighs> every time someone asks me that i'm it's like a battle in my mind oh, okay. <laughs> i like the ones i like is not the the ones people like <laughs> i feel the same <laughs> way goes, about my stuff and it goes goes on yeah but lately the ones i've been creating on an ipad it's been the ones that I like the most. Right. You know, because I really enjoy this experience of having like the pan on the screen. I never had mm -hmm. it before. I always wanted like one of those big displays, tablet space, like. Yeah, um, like a Cintiq. Cintiq, but mm -hmm. it was so expensive. That's cool. And you know, 
and since the iPad is like an all-in-one thing, you can, you know, read your emails, you can, and it's yeah. easy, it's Apple, <laughs> it's compatible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. It really is super easy. Yeah. I can see on this piece, all these little details look yeah. very similar to what you're doing right now. Yeah, it's, um, that's, uh, even if you go to my portfolio again, there's mm -hmm. one uh, design way there. Hold on, mind. hold on. <laughs> can, I can kind of give a, you know. All right, which one? In the iPad Pro? No, go all the way down. It's like, a, I'm sorry, in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, wow. <whoa>. Yeah. <laughs> it's a black and white. This guy right here, um, that's okay. Yeah. So basically, awesome. this is like all, It's I think it's a legal, I don't know, it's a poster, like a big page. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, all I used, I used was like a nankin. It's like a Japanese type of ink. Oh. And a pen uh, and paper. It's all like ink and paper, actually. Yeah. Wow. So that's my style right there. So when I start like doing digital, which is way quicker, right. and you don't need materials and don't make a mess. <laughs> true. Uh, I try to keep it uh, as true as possible to my, you know, to my style. Yeah. You know? yeah, I feel like that could be said for a lot of artists, like whether you're digital or traditional, your, your style. Yeah. tends to stay pretty similar. There are artists that they do something um, in one way when they use more like, you know, ink and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's true. And when they go digital, they see all the possibilities, you know, mm -hmm. with the tools and they start, they do it like a different type. Yeah. Different type of style. Right. Which I think is really cool, you know, it's that's you exploring the possibilities. They explore a little bit because yeah. it's quicker. You don't really make any decisions that will actually hurt you. Yeah in the end. Really cool, this guy's scary. Love it. So what is this for? This one was uh, for a, a magazine that I used to work back in the days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Noise, uh, yeah, Noise Magazine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was Noise. <laughs> it was Pantation Design. Uh, so uh, yeah, we did a, like an article about this band, it's Damn Laser Vampires, mm -hmm. and uh, um, they actually kind of dress up like that when they play, mm -hmm. you know, on the yeah. concerts. And, and, uh, but we kind of tried to make it like a comic character. Out yeah, of it, it so, looks you know. like that for sure. Is this you? No. No, but that's <laughs> one of, that's the noise, and I made mm -hmm. the editorial design. Nice. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Very cool, yeah, if you have any questions for Doug, please feel free to ask them. We're gonna be doing a giveaway in just a couple minutes. Um, Mark is wondering, are all of your details on one layer or do you have detail layers? I have detail layers, which is, uh, let me, this one. Let's see, let's see. Nice. <laughs> it really brings a level of finish to the yeah. work when you add these details. Definitely. It's gonna make more sense. I, yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Aaron says the iPad Pro is a game changer. It is. Yes. That's the perfect way to put it. Mm hmm Massimiliano, welcome back. Thanks for being here. I think a lot of people are really digging all the detail in your work. Like on that skull, how was, there was a ton of detail and that's what you're adding right now. Have you always been very detail oriented or is it more something you've yeah. learned? I yeah. always try to put the details. Um, it's kind of that, you know, fine line between like realistic right. and fantasy, I would mm -hmm. say. So I try to keep more resemble, resembling to the reality, but also more like, you know, dramatic, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> called dramatic because it's kind of over, you know, exp you know, over detail sometimes. Right, <laughs> you it's know? over the top. Yeah. For sure. Ooh, we have our countdown. It's going down three, two, one. It is time for the giveaway. I wish there were like horns that played. Like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We're gonna be giving away this awesome Photoshop pillow. Make sure that you are logged in on Behance. Make sure you're over here watching us at be.net slash live. If you're over on YouTube, come on over to Behance, take part in the giveaway. So log on in and say something in chat. We could ask a question of Doug if you are curious about anything. I always like to hear where you're all watching from, if you're at work, if you're done with work for the day, if you're 
uh, on the bus home or eating dinner and watching this, let us know. Yep. We will run a random script and a random person will be picked to win this pillow. Pillow hype, yes Desiree, you got it. <laughs> Yay, ooh Bruno's from Brazil as well. Ew, Brazil. What's up Bruno? <laughs> Melissa says, I'm so ready for the pillow. My cat needs the pillow, give it to me. I want a pillow too. Yeah, Doug wants the pillow as well. Jamie is watching from Fort Myers. Awesome. I love Florida. Mirabelle says, I'm at work. This has been a major distraction today, but it's okay, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that it's okay, Mirabelle. Don't want you to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be really sneaky. We have to be on your second monitor. Incognito. In yeah, incognito, yep. In a tiny little window. <laughs> That's how I do it at work. <laughs> Give me no <laughs> Uh, Melissa is from Hawaii. Awesome. Heather is from Arizona. Stephanie's from Ohio. Woo. Tim's all the way over in Germany. What's up, Tim? Massimiliano's also in Germany. Super cool. All right, we'll get that name appeared for us very quickly. Robert is from LA. JC is watching from work in London. Oh, this is awesome. All over the world. Yeah. Kathy's in Southern California, a fellow Cali girl. SoCal. SoCal, that's where you are too. Yep. All right, we have a winner. Yay, do you wanna announce the name? Matthew Fleming. Matthew the Fleming, winner. yes, you are the winner of this awesome Photoshop pillow. All right, think fast, here you go. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to keep this one. But Matthew, we will be sending you your brand new pillow. Make sure you keep an eye out on your Behance messages. Adobe Live will message you, get your details, and take it from there. Congrats to you. Woohoo. Awesome. We got Dominique from, or Dominic from Slovakia. Super cool. Oh, that's awesome. Mark from Lahala. Cool, cool, cool. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm everywhere. Seriously, everywhere. And also, chat, you are so supportive of your friends who have won the giveaway. Thank you for being so positive. If you didn't win, don't be sad. We have four more streams tomorrow that you could win. We also have another challenge tomorrow. It'll be a different theme. Uh, today's theme is warm weather. Oh, just kidding. We're not going to be doing a challenge tomorrow. We're going to be doing portfolio reviews. Ooh, that's that's awesome. even better. Yeah. I think. But um, the challenge today is warm weather, and we want you to create an illustration alongside Doug while he's working. You should be working as well. You have until 4.30, so about an hour to get those submissions in. And maybe at about 4 o'clock, we'll look at a couple that are already submitted. Sound good? Sound good. My design has a little bit to do with the warm water, too. So I think so. I agree. Let's see. I'm going to make a look. Warm enough. Mm hmm. I'm interested to see what color his skin is going to be. You don't have to tell me, or you can. Uh, maybe. So, that's one thing I was, uh, one I was trying to talk about. It's um, the possibilities to minimize number of colors to keep mm -hmm. the cost down when you go in printing shirt. Um, right. Taking uh, in consideration you're going to do as a screen printing, which that's uh, how. Um, number of colors will affect your, you know, the process. Um, in the past five years, I've been working, you know, with screen printing. Mm -hmm. So, like, keeping the number of colors down, uh, I learned how to, and, and, you know, it was also the main goal of every client, you know, and you can actually achieve, like, awesome results, you know. And I'm going to show a little bit that actually, depending on the color of the fabric or the shirt you're going to use, you can use this, uh, you know, one of the colors of the design. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your design, you printing three colors, but then the shirt is another another yeah. color, so there'll be a fourth color. Right. So it's a little trick right there. Very and cool. Which might be the what I'm gonna do here. Ooh. Okay. So you already know what color shirt you're gonna have. Yep. Wow. Tima says she thinks it's gonna be green. Tima, I was thinking green as well. So we'll see if we're right. Let's see. Doug's like, I don't know. 
Maybe. So there's a few things right here that I like to, you know, accent with the black. Okay. And is that just because it's all the way in the back and it gets a little darker? Yeah, usually the black, black, solid black, it's when it's close to, you know, let's say one finger is overlapping each other, right. you know, they kind of touching, you know, edge to edge, stuff Makes like sense. that. Aaron says that uh, they overlaid the colors for today's project. So they use some screen printing techniques. So awesome. Very cool. I'm gonna get the gallery open and take a peek at a couple. I'm excited to see. Yeah. I'm cheating, I'm looking. Mm -hmm. Tima, oh, I'm sorry, you're not a girl. Tima is not a girl, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Amaltea says San Francisco is such a beautiful city. Do you agree? Yes, I do. But San yeah. Diego is better? No. No? I, I'm, I'm, it's not about being better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's different, you right. know? Right, right. I like the way, you know, here, everything is so green. Like if you, you know, cross the bridge, go up north, you know, you have the parks. And it's, yeah. I love that, that possibility. Uh, San Diego is green too. Uh, but we have the problem of the rain sometimes, and we get oh. very like uh, desert-like. Okay. But we have the ocean, which is a good, good thing, you know. It's warm. It, too. It's warm, and you know, we can actually be in the ocean. We have the bay as well. Mm. That we can go swimming. Like Man, I'm so jealous. The water here is so cold. <laughs> Gotta put some wetsuits on. Yeah, I'm used to going to like Florida for vacation, and it's like 80 degree water. It feels like a bathtub. Yeah. So nice. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Jamie Hernandez in chat knows what I'm talking about from Fort Myers. Is that where you are? I already forget. <laughs> Mark says the burritos are better in San Diego. For sure. I would <laughs> That's agree. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We actually, uh, we we're so close to the border. And that's what we do sometimes. We just drive like 30 minutes down and we cross the border and go surf in Mexico. Oh, really? Get some good food and right. good waves. Is it's it pretty cool. easy to cross the border that quickly? Well, if you have the documentation, yes. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That is easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Martin is very offended by how ugly this hand is, like by how kind of gnarly he is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's working. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jose is wondering about your current work situation. Are you freelancing or working? So working. I always freelanced right. while I was full-time working. So mm -hmm. I never had a, like a period where I wasn't freelancing and not working. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I was always like doing both. So... Um, I might give a break on freelancing this time. Gotcha. But probably in the future, I'm gonna just get back to it. Okay. Yeah. So you're really focusing on just the, the new, work that you're doing yeah. now. Yeah, I'm gonna start a new uh, career right now, a new job actually, and then I'm gonna have to focus a little bit, so. Oh, wow, congrats. Thank you. That's really exciting. Can you talk about it at all, or is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. Um, actually, it's a it's a cool job, It's uh, it's called uh, Govex and uh, and actually we gonna I'm gonna be a visual designer there. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna be working with some friends as well, and uh, it's almost like uh, we put put up on sa uh, for sale like products like Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, but just focus on military. Okay. So it's like a you know we give discounts so it's for like first responder, government, military people. It's pretty cool. That's yeah. really awesome. It's a nice little niche. Yeah, I'm excited. Very nice. Is it in San Diego? Yeah, it's in San Diego. Cool, cool. That's great. Okay. Uh, Paul is wondering mm -hmm. about the daily creative challenge I see popping up on Behance. That's a great question, Paul. So for the next two weeks, we're running a little uh, daily creative challenge where we want to help you feel more confident in your illustrator skills in just seven days. So you make seven illustrations until April 21st. I think you have in to uh, complete the seven illustrations. And every evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time, we're doing a little like 25, 30 minute live stream to work through the daily challenge. So whatever the theme is, and also to highlight some of the community's posts. So yes, we will be live again at six o'clock over on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. 
And if you would like to learn more about Illustrator and learn some really basic tools, you should check it out. I will be there. That's awesome. It is just me. <laughs> just you? Yeah, just me, awesome. alone. It's a change of pace for sure. Cool. Oh, well, Paco's there too. <laughs> Yeah, and also Michael's there, but <laughs> no one else knows that. But now they do, I guess. <laughs> I was trying to sound all cool. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So Paula is from Porto Alegre. Oh, that's my hometown. Oh, nice. Who's How do that? You... Paula. Paula. Oh, that's my friend, Paula. What's up, Paula? Thank you. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Mark says hi from GovX. Oh, Mark is right there. Sweet. What's up, Mark? Hey. Thank you for watching. You have so much support. I love it. <laughs> Man. I'm so excited, though. Yeah. If I could get my friends to come support, that'd be great. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, saying, uh, I'm busy. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, I have work. Yeah. Well, so do I. This is it. <laughs> oh, no, Cisco. You exposed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, Tima, can you join without registering? You won't get your daily challenge if you don't register, Tima. So if you pop in your email and your name, you'll just get an email every day for the next two weeks. So I'm adding some scales right here to do the little guy. Nice. So this is kind of a, um, you didn't have them in your original design, but now you're adding no, them. No, yeah. I decided, remember that I start with the, uh, Eyeball. Yeah, it was an eyeball. Mm -hmm. It was kind of tattoo wise. Yep. So, yeah, changing a little bit. Let's give them a little bit more like life to it. Yeah, I think so. And that really had, helps to add the dimension too. Yeah. Rounded. <clears throat> oh, Jared says that he can't wait for you to start at GovX. Oh, there you go. Hey, Jared. Oh, we said hi to you already. I remember now. Yeah, they were on yesterday. So why did you decide to take off the tattoos of this guy? Uh, because, um, I don't know, I felt like the tattoo was, it, it was more like filling up space and actually having a meaning to it. Mm -hmm. So I, I always look for a mean, the meaning, you know, like yeah. if it's a monster, let's make a monster, right? Like a real monster almost. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, we talk a lot, and I was talking with Timmy about this, just not adding decoration for the sake of adding decoration. Yes, exactly. Which I do a lot, I will admit it. So this is cool. It's inspiring. Yeah, uh, but don't don't feel so like you know shame because of that because it's a process. You start doing it, and yeah. then you you know and you revise. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a good part of it. Right, and I I mean decoration is okay sometimes. Yeah. The tattoos would be cool, but I like your thought process here. Yeah. Melissa says, OMG, I love it. Love, love, love. Thank you. All right, Chad, what is your favorite part about this design? Is it the eyeball? Is it the little antenna or the antlers? The birds in the back? I think I like the little antler, little antenna. It's cute. Yeah. St Stephanie said the two was too much. Ah. So yeah, I agree with that. There you go. But it's really cool when the chat uh, adds their feedback. Sometimes you can make design decisions together, like, all right, what color should we make this? What design? I love that about Adobe Live. Yeah, so today, my idea, like for the colors, mm -hmm. I was thinking about already. I want to keep, like, of course, number of colors low. Right. And then um, with my, I want to do something kind of you know, vintage, more modern type mm -hmm. of thing. So probably I'm gonna use some pastel color. Let's see. Um, just since uh, that's one thing, you know, it's cool to think about. It's uh, since we're doing monster, uh, if you use too strong colors, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be creepy. And oh. then I, I don't want it to be creepy because creepy can be very like a uh, focus into one type of, you know, um, uh, how to say, uh, you know, market or yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. audience. Totally but if you agree. make it more friendly, you know, it's it's kind of more universal. Yeah. So since we're going to probably give this away, I, I, I want to keep more universal, you know, more friendly. Nice. That's really thoughtful. Yeah. 
Paul says that the crack on the thumbnail is really awesome. Yeah, how the nails are kind of yeah. split. Ooh, JC also likes the fingernails. Uh, Nagar likes the eyeball. Martin says, I like the birds. Tim likes the scales. The birds, uh, I like too, because it kind of gives the, you know, the idea of how big that monster can be, you mm -hmm. know, since the birds are so small. Right. I guess I didn't really think about the size of the monster yeah. yet. Oh, I think I just imagined him like the size of your actual hand because he's holding an apple pencil. So it's just like this tiny little hand going yeah. through the entire ocean. <laughs> That's so funny. So I'm adding some like splashes of water. Oh, know. coming off of him. You know, it was underwater, you know. So. Mm -hmm. so can he breathe underwater or does he have to go all the way above water? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe he can <laughs> hold it like, you know, a whale or something. Mm-hmm. Let's see. He breathes out of his little antlers. So this is supposed to, like right here, it's supposed to be the nose, so. Oh. I might, I might, I might point that out more, like, you know, make it more clear, like, uh, once I add the collar. Gotcha. So, I thought that was just like a mark on its skin. No, yeah. Oh. So. Wow. It's crazy how knowing something that small can change the whole design for me. Yeah. <laughs> Val says that she likes to imagine that this monster is large enough to pick up a car from the bridge. Whoa. He's a friendly monster. He would only pick it up if there was an earthquake and he needed to get all of the cars off the bridge. It's <laughs> helpful. Sure. <laughs> I wonder how far underwater this monster goes. Is it just like a tiny little guy or is he huge underwater? Oh, I don't know. You know. It's all a mystery. The 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 bridge is supposed to be all the way in the back, you know, so we don't know how far he is from the bridge actually, so it can be like a small guy or a big guy. Mm -hmm. Small guy with a big heart. Oh, <laughs> that's Doug. <laughs> so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. All right, Tim. Tim is going to bed. We'll see you later. Thank you for being here with oh, us. Yeah, thanks for watching. Our awesome moderator. Thank you, Val, for being here too. Another awesome mod, Adobe friend. Thank you, Adobe Live, for being here. Thank you, Paco, for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Doug, for being here. <laughs> Thank you, me, for being yeah. here. All day. <laughs> All day, every day. Woo, you guys woo. do like a great job, though. Gotta stay hydrated. That's the key. And drink a lot of tea. So, sit here. Ooh, Racine, that's such a good idea. What do you say? So that it would be cool if the apple pencil was drawing the bridge like in yeah. the design. So I was thinking about this interaction, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it would be cool too, you know. Like in the end, like I was thinking about so many options to do it. And even yeah. like the hand coming out of an iPad and have the background in, on an iPad and have this dimension, you know, yeah. kind of, that would be cool too. And make the iPad kind of wet, mm -hmm. you know, kind of AR. Right. Like reality. <laughs> oh man, that's what I love about design. There are literally a million, there's infinite amount of ideas that you could do and you have to just nail down one and yeah. go with it. It's kind of maddening at times. Steve says that you could have the tail popping out in the background to give people a sense of how big it is. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Does he have a tail? Yeah, Steve, does he have a tail? <laughs> How do you know these things? How do you know them? It's a good question. If he has a tail, what kind of tail would it be? Picture like a dragon tail, but it has fish fins on it. Kathy is wondering, I missed how to register for the seven day challenge. How do we get notices? I'm new to the Behance challenge. So, uh, Catherine, if you go to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, or maybe someone can post a link to one of the videos that's already been posted for the seven day challenge, there's a link in the description to sign up. And then you'll get an email uh, bright and early tomorrow morning, about 6 a.m. Pacific time, with the day's theme. Steve saw this monster on the Discovery Channel once. Okay, so now that's how you know what the tail looks like. Discovery Channel all day. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, what do you like to watch or listen to while you're making work? So, uh, I don't watch much TV. Like, mm -hmm. I do some Netflix when I'm not doing anything, but when I'm working, I like to listen to a lot of music. I go from like rock from, you know, 80s, 70s, mm -hmm. uh, until like punk rocks and hardcore until like the 90s. Um, which uh, one of my favorite bands is from San, San Francisco. Cool, who? Yeah, no Effects. Nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, old school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes I like, you know, to keep me hyped mm -hmm. and keep me going. Oh, but sometimes yeah. I'm kind of tired, I just want to chill. So I, I like to listen to some reggae, like Iration, stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. L lately I've been listening to uh, Creedence, Water Ooh, Revival. Yeah, so that's good. I love it. Mm-hmm. I can get you hyped too, but also is like kind of mellow and yep. flowing. Mm -hmm. I love um, uh, New Young as well. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. Cool. You have a nice selection of different music you yeah, can listen yeah. to. <laughs> Val, that's funny. The moment that I said Dragon Tail, she instantly heard the song from Dragon Tales, the cartoon. Yeah. I know the exact <laughs> song you're thinking about. That's classic. Dragon Tail, Dragon Tail. Do, 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 do. Yep. Man, I'm ashamed. That I know that song. <laughs> I was way too old for that show when it came out. That's awesome. <laughs> so now that we have here, we're gonna get some water, you know, because the little details. Yeah. That's the hard part for me. Like sometimes I have too many details, and I gotta remember that I have to color them. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, because a lot of your work is just black and white. Yeah. So you kind of do have to fill it up with these values mm -hmm. and details. See, now I got to have had another idea here. Ooh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these guys, go back here, I'm going to add a new layer, and let's do this. Magic. The magic of layers in Illustrator Draw. Cool. You know. That's exactly what I was picturing for his tail. That's awesome. So let's give some, you know, fence type of thing. Yeah. Nice. And that might, might be another opportunity to add a little pop of color. Yes. A different one. Mm -hmm. Yes, Voodoo Val, you know the song too. It's crazy how these old cartoon theme songs just get stuck in our brains for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Do you have any guilty pleasure, like things that you watch or listen to that you're like, this is for children. I shouldn't watch this. Um, I watched cartoon like until I was like probably 15. So yeah. I love them. I love cartoon like animation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But man, Toy Story is oh, one of my yeah. favorites. That's awesome. Which you, have you watched the Coco lately? I just watched it on an airplane. Really? Yeah. So it was really good. It was really good. It's my son's favorite. Oh, I love that. It has great music. Yeah. It well, was kind of dark, like kind of scary. I love, I love the monsters though. Mm hmm Me too. Especially the flying. I forget what they're called. The the spirit animals? Mm hmm What were they? Alebritas. Alebritas. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Paco. Paco knows that. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yeah, I loved it. Yay! I'm proud of you, Betsy. There you go. That's so cool. I did fall asleep during it, but I was on an airplane, so. I wasn't driving. <laughs> right, I was not, <laughs> I was not driving the airplane. <laughs> oh, what's up, Renee? Another Adobe friend. How you doing? Thanks for joining. Martin says it's a real monster Thank now. Thank you, Renee. We went for dinner last night, right? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same Renee. Uh, Martin says it's a real monster because it has the, the fin on the back now. Yeah. There we go. So now you're adding the fine details on the Apple Pencil. Yeah. 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 So this part is a little metal, so I'm going to do the right. opposite shading here. Mm -hmm. Very and shiny. Of, and shiny and, and sharp, you know? Right. Oh, Rasim said to add fins a long time ago. I didn't hear your suggestion, but it somehow made its way into the live stream. Yeah. Nice. 
Good job. Mm -hmm. You don't see the, the one that you do. Right, and as you continue to work, I'll get this gallery opened up and maybe we can take a peek at just a couple Sounds in like good. five minutes because some people have submitted early, which is awesome, but you do have um, 35 minutes chat to get your submissions in. We're just going to look at some early to make it a little easier at the end. Wow, this has come such a long way since you started today. Yeah. It's incredible. How, how far are we? We have another hour, right? Yeah, yeah we so have about an hour. Mm -hmm. about, about to be done with the shading, though. Sweet. Alrighty. Maybe when you get done with the shading, then we can look at some submissions. And chat, I don't know if you noticed, but we do have a new submission style for the challenge this week. So you can submit your work and then you can even view everyone else's submissions, which is really, really cool. That wasn't available before. To get some inspiration. Yeah, right, inspiration, totally. You can even um, appreciate other people's work, follow each other on Behance. Seth wants to know, how did you get such a cool job? How did you get such a cool job, Doug? Um, follow your dreams? Yeah, it's kind of like you, you know, you set some goals to where you, what do you want to do and what do you probably would have fun doing it you know i wouldn't say yes for every job opportunity would, you know mm. would come across uh, i mean depending on the financial situation i probably would say yes you know but i always <laughs> try to you know to look for that you know job that gonna fulfill my soul more than my pocket uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. i think that there's a good balance right there <laughs> that's a great balance um because now in the end, you're gonna spend 24 seven in, into a company that's gonna be your second house. So you need to feel, you know, comfortable and, you know, feel good in there, you know. Totally. And then don't, it's it's kind of like harsh when you get the feeling that you were just wasting your time, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to do that when like you're spending 70% of your life, and, you know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think about sometimes if you have a typical like nine to five job, just how much time you yeah. spend there. Mm -hmm. You really do have to see it as maybe a second family and really stand behind what the mm -hmm. company. It's important to have needs. good friendships as well. Mm -hmm. Be nice, yes. treat people nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think to answer your question, Seth, how do you get such a cool job? Just finding something that, like Doug said, fulfills your soul and yeah. not necessarily will make you super rich i mean maybe it will Who i knows? think i think that's a an outcome like you know it's a consequence it's a plus yeah. yeah right and like we were saying on the first day find a job uh that you enjoy and you'll never work a day of your life is yeah. that how it goes something like that yeah that's what we aim for right mm -hmm. yeah ryan says that the mor the mortgage monsters took his soul sorry <laughs> ryan <laughs> you got bills to yeah. pay <laughs> That's too bad. All right. But I also think things are important to different people. Like yeah. If having stability for a family or providing for them is yeah, that's the most so. important thing, and you really focus on your outside of work life. Yeah. I there's agree with a you. balance. Uh, where can we see the artworks of the participants? If you go to be.net slash live, which is where you probably are, and look above the chat, there should be a tab that says challenge. Click on the WooBox link. It is the challenge submission link, and you can click View Gallery at the top, and that should take you there. Yeah, Martin says, follow your passion. Agreed. All right. You wanna go ahead? I think I'm done with the shading Sweet. right now. Sweet, perfect. I'm gonna have to move forward. Great work, great work. All right, so we're gonna check out some of these submissions so far. Like I said earlier, the theme is warm weather. And as you can, these are all the submissions from today. You can see a similar color palette. That's because we provided it for you. We'd love for you to use that and then also use Photoshop Sketch, Illustrator Draw, a one of the mobile apps, or you can use Photoshop or Illustrator on the desktop. But these are all of the submissions from right now. Let's just look through them real quick. 
Maybe we can say something that is strong and then something that they could work on next time. Yeah, that's, uh, um, it looks like, uh, you know, the snake vision. Snake vision? Yes, they, they, they see the warmth. Oh, yeah, 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 it's totally. Kind of, it's like almost like x-ray. Yeah, this is really abstract and interesting. Yeah. I'm interested to know what these shapes are, Stephanie. If they are supposed to be representational, if it's, if it's just abstraction. Or is it? Just these. Word or something? Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure, but I really like the interesting use of the color palette. Uh, a lot of the other submissions are really bright. It's warm though. <laughs> it's warm for, sure. for yeah. sure, but it looks like maybe you use the colors in multiply mode and darken them up a little bit. Yeah. It's really interesting. Nice job. All right, we've got another submission from Laura. Summer Love. Cute character design. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oops. I think by summer, the animals probably would be having the, the babies already. That's true. <laughs> They're super excited to have their little baby birds. Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, Lalu, again. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. Nice. Good job as always. So what do you think that she could do to strengthen this? Um, I think uh, some law. I, I mean, it's been kind of picky though. But, uh, I think that spring is the time of uh, oh. Actually, it's the love, yeah. the love time for the animals. So at this point, I think they would be like having a family instead of like <laughs> dating. <laughs> That's so critical. <laughs> More Which, have you ever heard of like summer loving, having a blast? Yeah, and <laughs> and one of the the way to express a warm on the design, guys, it's like good way to do it. It's like maybe sunset. Sunset oh. is warm colors mm -hmm. and beautiful colors, so it gives more that idea, you know, mm -hmm. the warm. Yeah. And as always, this has a sweet little, like, children's book yeah, feel to feel, it. Yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. I, lo nice. I like the Awesome style. job, Lalu. All right, this is by Noah. Oh. This is really nice. Yeah, that's really good. That summertime right there. Mm -hmm. And it almost seems like it's getting to be a sunset because the light is almost horizontal. Oh, that, that one's really good. Yeah. I really liked it. Nice. So what could they work on? Um, I would make the... I like the palette though, how yeah. you know, gives the attention to um, the to the character. Right. But maybe on the sand, on the bumps of the sand, if you like, you did on the background a little bit of the yellow. Oh, okay. Maybe bring it a little bit to the fore, the oh, front. So okay. it, you know, it, it will put that accent color a little bit as the sun right. is reflecting to the on the tip on the top of the little bumps. Mm -hmm. you know? I think it will accent a little bit more of the design. Yeah, I assume that this was water but I guess it could totally be sand. No. Nice. And I really, I've said this in a previous entry, but I love the yellow highlights, getting some sort of pink or blue, yeah. or I mean, yellow on clouds is always nice. I like the chalk, like mm -hmm. in a crayon. Yeah. Effect, yeah, I think this is a good example of having a messy kind of childlike border, but it still looks finished. It yeah. looks intentional. Yeah. Nice job, Noah. This is by Aaron, and Aaron said that they used uh, some overlay <laughs> techniques for this. This is really beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well done. Yeah, this almost looks like a paper cut. Yeah. And then they like were Little laying bit. it on a exacto board or something. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yeah. Fine details right there. Mm -hmm. I think things are so evenly detailed over the entire thing that. Part of my problem is that my eye doesn't really know where to go because yeah. it's all so detailed. Well, yeah. Sometimes your eye, it's kind of trained to kind of look to one specific spot yeah. of design. Yeah. So sometimes artists go like, okay, I'm going to mess up with you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, messing with me for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if it, that's your intention. Yeah. It's yeah. not a bad thing. It's just yeah. a comment to think about. Yeah. Nice job, Aaron. Really cool. This is by JP Nandon. <laughs> He's so sad. Like, please don't eat me, but also put me out of my misery, please. It's like a melting. Yeah. <laughs> that <help> summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I liked it. I love how uh, crisp the design is, even though you used really textural brushes. Yeah, it's like a flat design style. Right, especially these little drips are so uh, graphic. Also, yeah. this. Yeah. Really nice job, great palette as well, and the subtle yeah. gradient in the background is always nice. I like that. Good job, JP. Yep. This is by Massimiliano. Whoa, abstract. 
This almost looks like a design for an interior. Yeah, like, it's like some a, sort of abstract concept. Like a sculpture type of thing. Totally. So you have a sculpture inside of an interior design inside of an illustration. Yeah, I wonder where oh. he, he designed that. Huh? Like, it was Adobe Illustrator? It was It could Photoshop? be. You can do 3D shapes in Illustrator. Yeah. So, Massimiliano, if you're still here, let us know how you made this. Yeah. Really interesting. I think that my only critique is that this black around this frame is kind of jarring for me because I don't see black like anywhere else. Yeah. In the design. I think that also the colors are not kind of, um, it's too many colors and they're not going together a little bit. Right. But, you know. Yeah, the whole thing is pretty all over the place. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. It's just a thing. All right, this is by Tima. Always making awesome things. It was the same person from yesterday. Oh, yeah. I love that style, man. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Really, really nice. Love the use of hash marks or mark making to make shadows instead of actually just shading it. And the sky to like to be the whole planets and the universe. Mm -hmm. Man, that's one of my passions. Like, I love the universe. Yeah. The galaxy. Cool. So, like this that. really speaks to you. Yeah. And then, like, the way the, you know, the horizon goes like, floating mm -hmm. kind of you know yeah love that that's nice Good so motion. what what could tima work on to strengthen this uh i don't know it looks it looks really good for me mm -hmm. it's warm there's a yeah. thermometer on his shirt right there it's telling that's already hot <laughs> super hot and uh i guess he's drinking something mm -hmm. is that a coffee or something I don't know. It could be water. Water? It could be coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nice. something transparent because, you know, you can see the shirt in the background. Um, but I, I think it's that idea to be warm enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally gets the idea of warm weather. I like that style, though. Yeah. Really good. Right. Really well made. Really nicely composed. I think my critique would be just this green down here. I'm guessing that you used the blue just in multiply mode or it's something like that. On yellow, I like the green, but it's just nowhere else. And so my eyes just like, whoop, there's some green. Yeah. Where's the rest? And now they point it out, yeah. Great. Just a little nitpicky thing. But great job, team up. Yeah. This is by Juan Camilo. He won uh, the Timmy stream. Oh, did Which is awesome. So he made another cool design. It's kind of like sublime sun uh, totally, style. Totally, yeah. He's yeah. so happy. Or is he crying? I can't tell. Uh, crying because he's laughing? Yeah. Could be. Yeah, that's cool. This is too much. Love it. Yeah. So what do you think that uh, Juan Camilo could do to strengthen this? Um, I think, um, I don't know. I think the background, like mm -hmm. too many clouds behind it. Okay. You know, if you keep it like more like the bluish type of thing, you know. Right. I think it would give more attention to the design. I totally agree. You know, and I like the texture used like all over design, you know, the stress effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice and gritty. Yeah. I totally agree that the background with white, that's like your brightest value. Yeah. It, since that is back there, my eye keeps jumping back there, but there's yeah. nothing really interesting. There's no subject. Yeah, I just feel sometimes it's very, um, you know, delicate when you use like clouds in the design because clouds can be very, um, you know, cheesy sometimes and mm -hmm. if you don't do it the right way you can take the value out of your illustration that's true so keep simple maybe mm -hmm. no clouds just blue is going to bring the value even more value to the, the main character right you know? I can agree yeah but I do like the spacing I like how it's open up here and it gets a little more yeah. congested down here yeah nice job this is by Fadian mm, that's cool really really simple design mm -hmm. I love this uh, kind of screen tone on top yeah. Oh, and it's a the little mountains. ice cream. <laughs> yeah. It's like the ice cream land or something. So cool. Yeah. I love this. I noticed that this sun has blue eyes, and then both of these characters just have black yeah. dots. Maybe they have black eyes. Who knows? But yeah. maybe you could throw some green in there or something. Yeah. I think the white background could have been another color or something. Mm. You know, like a light yellow, a tan mm -hmm. or something. And it right. would fill up more the design. Right. This really reminds me of like a vignette illustration or an editorial illustration that would go in a magazine, something printed. Yep. Might be able to put some words in there, mm -hmm. have them move through. 
Hmm. Really cool idea. And I think that is all we have to look at right now. Uh, chat, you have about 20 minutes. You can see below us. The timer is there. So keep working on your submission and make sure you get them in before 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, 20 minutes, uh, because today that's the last day that you can work on this theme. After this stream, we're gonna be done. And tomorrow we're gonna be doing portfolio reviews. So no themes for tomorrow. Popping back over to your work. All right, so let's add on, add on some more details. So still kind of, you know, trying some, some things. Um, I still can see some things that I don't like it. So kind of the lid in it. Ah, yeah, I could see why you wouldn't like that little mark. It was kind of heavy. Yeah, I'm going to open up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go in with a different angle. I might go like this. Oh, okay. You know? Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> there we go. He lives! <laughs> <laughs> like Frank's thing. Yes. All right. So I think for now, that's what I want. Uh, okay. I might go with this guy. I'm just looking at Jan Eric's submission that came in just recently. It's really funny. Just wait, chat. You'll love it. Yes, Adobe Live tomorrow, we will have Behance portfolio reviews focused on illustration. That is what will take up kind of a big chunk of each stream. I'm excited to learn more about that. I love doing reviews. Never done a reveal though. Like reviewing someone else's? Yeah. Cool, it'll be fun. I think I had, I had some friends that Adobe Behance that uh, made it a portfolio review in Brazil. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. I, they were like one of the judges or something like that. Sweet. Yeah, I think that is so helpful, especially for students to get their yeah. portfolios reviewed. Cause I know that especially if you go to an art school or have a strong art program at your high school, you're still only being told kind of one doctrine, yeah. one way to make things. So it's always helpful to hear other people's thoughts. Yeah. You never, it's hard though, right? When you have like a class full of like talent people as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I feel like I'm so desensitized to people critiquing my work from <laughs> going to art school. I'm just like, you can't hurt me. <laughs> you can't hurt me anymore. I've been hurt too many times. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> you went to school for graphic design, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And it was really helpful, though. Um, put me to the, you know, the right track mm -hmm. to kind of help me uh, clarify, clarify, I'd say, make clear what I was pursuing. You know. Right. I was actually, uh, I tried another university for, uh, you know, uh, propaganda, you know, and marketing. Oh, propaganda. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be ads. And right. I didn't make it. I mm. failed the test because mm -hmm. in Brazil you need to take a test to be, you know. Right. I failed the test before it. too. So, I'm not alone. <laughs> but then I had a friend that was like, man, there's this graphic design course open up on this university. Bro, that's us, man. You need to go and try it. Mm -hmm. And it was like the brand new. And then I tried it and I, I made it. So I got approved the mm -hmm. test and I graduated. And look at you now. Yeah. You got that's such a cool exactly job. Exactly what I wanted. Yeah, know. that's awesome. When I first went to college, I I started as like a graphic design major. Because yeah. I didn't really know the difference between graphic design or um sorry, illustration. So I was pursuing it and I was like, wow, I hate this. <laughs> I took so many courses and I was not having a good time and then it came time to actually do the test to get into the program after the first year and I was just so unhappy and I was my only all-nighter that I pulled all of my college career because after that I was like I'm never doing this again it was so silly it's, it's always like a love and hate relationship yeah in the beginning right so I didn't pass the test which was good because I'm not a graphic designer no wonder I didn't pass it but then I went to art school and it was awesome, awesome. pretty awesome pros and cons 
<laughs> okay. So I think I'm probably ready to move on with the colors now. All right, cool, cool, cool. Martin was wondering when you were gonna do color. Cool, so yeah. let's create a new layer, colors. I have a preset up, you know, color scheme that I had in my mind already. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm gonna do is um, just gonna pop that up right here. I think Timmy was using that same way. I think everybody. Yeah, the little blobs. Yeah, we did a little color. blob right there. Mm -hmm. um, easy access instead Super of like easy. going to the palette all the time. Uh, one good op update that uh, Adobe Draw had right now, it's kind of very helpful. It's that um, you actually can fill in the whole artboard with one color. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, back then you couldn't change the background color. So right, you have, have to actually like, draw a square. Like a square, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want something warm and kind of vintage kind of off-white background. That's what I want. So basically Sweet. that's the shirt collar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of have here ready. And it was, if you guys are seeing my iPad, it's this little very bright color. Um, oh, wow. Like it's right here, mm -hmm. barely can see. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's like cream. So it's a cream collar and there you go. It's kind of hard to see. No, totally. But it gives that, it's gonna give a good balance between the collar I'm gonna use, the palette and everything else, a good combination. Yeah, that's a really cool point to make when I was making uh, graphic t-shirts. There was a really big focus on making it look authentic and like classic. Yep. So we barely ever made bright white t-shirts. It was always off-white, it was always cream. Yeah. Because when it comes back from a printer and you have an actual graphic pasted or printed on it and it's a totally white background, it can look quote unquote cheap or just not as lived in. Yeah. So having that said, I think that's gonna be my guy's color right there. Sweet. Okay. Wait, which one? The green or the red? The background. Oh, he's, he's gonna be that color. Yeah, because Ooh. we're gonna give a cool like look, vintage look, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna work more with the accent colors, which is gonna be the teal and the um I don't know how to call that, like a light orange. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. You know, coral. It's much more orange on this. On my iPad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are they seeing that one or this one? Is it? They're oh. seeing that one. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I can, you know, rearrange. Well, it'll be a surprise for them when they receive their shirt, whoever wins. Yeah. Oh, it's much more orange. So let's see. So now I'm gonna add some, I, I created that layer right here, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna drag that all the way down. So you wanna make the color always the back. Mm -hmm. Back layer. Because okay. you want it to be under your lines. Under my lines, yes, correct. So, this is going to be kind of quick because I don't want to fill in anything like all the way. It's going to be just accent colors. Okay. You know? So, let's see how it's going to come out. I'm excited to see how you do this. Chat, are you pumped? I. So, you're using your tapered brush. Yeah, always. It's pretty small. So usually, let's say if you're gonna make a, you know, a, a shadow in the water, you probably would make it darker, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna use the shadow as like a, you know, a knocked out space. So anything around the hand, okay, like around here, is gonna be kind of without color. Cool. You know, so that's gonna be, gonna give the effect that I want. Sweet, I love how you've already thought through all of this. Yeah. I love that color. I can't wait to see it actually printed on a shirt. Yeah, Brent says I'm pumped. I'm pumped too, Brent. Awesome. Yeah, that bright green color is close to what I was expecting, but I thought it might be a little bit lighter. But I like this, it's so bright. Mr. Director says, this is strong work, Doug. Thank you, I appreciate it. He actually said Dougie. Dougie? <laughs> that works too, I guess. Yeah, people call me Dougie too. <laughs> but don't call him Douglas. It's Douglas is when someone is like mad at me or something. Douglas. My wife. <laughs> I'm sure she calls you something else when she's mad at you. Or now. When she's mad? Yeah. Sometimes she doesn't call me at all. Oh, <laughs> silence, <laughs> silence treatment. <laughs> Is there a story behind Douglas? Is it a family name? Uh, actually, Douglas 
oh, you know what? So pretty much half of my family, like, we have like very strong descendants from Portugal. Mm -hmm. But then the last generation actually are kind of half American, half Brazilian. Mm -hmm. So I think my mom and my dad wanted like a name that could sound both. Mm -mm. You know, mm -hmm. usually I think Douglas here is like a second mid name, right? Middle. Mm -hmm. So we say we pronounce differently in Brazil, Douglas. Oh, what okay. is it like? Douglas. Douglas. Yeah. Okay. And it's a very common name, actually. Oh, you know? really? Yeah. Interesting. There are people, yeah, like Jan right there. <laughs> Dougie Dog. Oh, Dougie Dog. <laughs> actually, people would call me Dougie or Dog. <laughs> so. D man, love it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really interesting. I wouldn't have thought. Douglas was a popular name in Brazil. It is. Uh, so in Brazil, we have this thing that actually we get a lot of American names. We kind of make it Portuguese, which is kind of oh, funky sometimes, but yeah. that's basically what it is. Can you give me other examples? There was, I wanted to give you like a fun one, but I forget. <laughs> it's, um, you know, Michael. Mm. We call Michelle. Right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's another one, uh, you know, like... Uh, Paul, it's Paulo. Oh, example. right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes on. Like my son, it was the same idea of mine. His name is Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, in Brazil, we call Gabriel. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same. It's, it's kind of easy to say, pronounce, you know. Right. Like if someone's an English speaker and they're seeing that name, they wouldn't be totally yeah. confused. Like uh, um, uh, Kathleen, mm -hmm. we do like. Uh, somebody's gonna help me out on this one, but like <laughs> I think it's Catalina or yeah, Ca or Catarini. Mm -hmm. oh, it depends. Right, right. I feel like Kathleen is not the usual translation. It's usually like or translation. It's usually a translation of Catherine. Yeah. Or Catalina. Mm -hmm. Names are so cool. I love it. <clears throat> so the when I start putting colors into it, mm -hmm. um, I like to make it like very close. You know, um, I don't have the gloves oh. that everybody's using, so I keep like <laughs> making these small dots. Right. Uh, I will get a glove one day. One day. Just don't feel very comfortable using it. Um. So I I try to keep like very close to you know to see the details. Oh, you say you mean zoomed in? Zoomed in. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, but then I zoom out a little bit just to see the composition. Mm -hmm. If it's not too much. Or sometimes I can see, you know, where where I'm going with, you know. Yeah, totally. That's that's a problem I have when I get too zoomed in, and then I'll fill it with detail, and I'll zoom out, and it's like, whoa, yeah. that was too much for that little spot. Yeah. So. Very cool. We have about six minutes left to get your challenge submissions in, everyone in chat. If you haven't submitted yet, we spent a little bit of time a couple minutes ago looking through the first six, seven, eight submissions. Uh, so we'll look at the rest that are submitted at the deadline. I'll kind of curate the list down and then Doug will pick a winner of the challenge who will receive this design on a t-shirt. So exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait to see how they actually turn out. Yeah. There's not much better than seeing your work on like a physical thing. Yeah, I get always so excited to see that. Yeah, what was your first experience with that? Um, it was, it's actually in, one, in my portfolio actually. Um, it was a shirt that I made for a friend, a couple mm -hmm. of friends of ours. Um, so the colors you guys probably are seeing on uh, on the screen, mm -hmm. it's a little brighter than actually it's gonna look like. Yeah, because that... that's RGB, mm -hmm. and I'm working with a CMYK color mode mm -hmm. because that's the color you want it. Especially because I think we're gonna print as a DTG. Mm -hmm. So okay. DTG is like CMYK. Um, so it's a little more dull, you know, not not so bright and hyped. Like yes, that. it is much more just like blue, like the bottom of this. Yeah, it's like more like a teal. Let's see. <laughs> Water models. <laughs> and Molly. What's up, Dana? Welcome. You didn't miss too much. Just Doug finishing up this awesome monster illustration. Steve, what color will the t-shirt be printed on? It'll be kind of like an off-white cream. Yeah. 
background. I know a lot of people like the, um, the black shirt, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it makes it way more complicated to for drawing on black shirts, actually. Yeah. Because you need to think as an inverted, you know, design. Yep. Or start drawing on the back, black background already, you know. Right, right. And oftentimes, if you have a really bright design and you want it to be on a black shirt, you're gonna have to use really thick ink yeah. to be able to be opaque on black, yeah. which it's really popular now to have like the sublimation print or the really soft hand feel, mm -hmm. so it's hard. So actually, that. um, that's called like a base, they call. So you print like a whole white underneath it. Right. First on the, yeah. on the shirt. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that white base, you can put any color. So in order to, to make that color to pop, you need that base. Yeah. Um, we call the shield print. It's basically like every time you use a base, you make the whole print way thicker on mm -hmm. a screen printing. Mm -hmm. But in VTG, everything's in a shirt. So it's everything soft. So oh. it doesn't really matter. So even with DTG, you can print on a black shirt. Yeah. White or bright colors. Nowadays, the DTG evolved to a point where they can print white. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, there was no white, so yeah. everything that was white on the design was a see-through. You know. That's really interesting. Yeah. Wowza. Nowadays, <laughs> they even like merging screen printing with DTG too. Like they screen print the base, mm -hmm. and then they can print like actually portraits in the shirts, like Whoa. perfect. Whoa. Insane. I love it. I love how quickly technology is yeah, changing. It's crazy. <laughs> Stephanie really does not like white t-shirts. No, I like white t-shirts. I'm a fan of the off-white. Yeah. But but I'll wear white from time to time. <laughs> I like white, especially the blacking. Maybe it's like more like a man thing. Yeah, it's yeah, very, very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black and white. Stark. Yeah. Totally. I really like the, the vintage retro-y look. Yeah. Pretty much my entire wardrobe is from the thrift store, so it's all very old. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Uh, Pape wants to know, how expensive is DTG? DTG, uh, it probably a little bit more expensive because you have the option to get a one-off. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you can go to the store and get one shirt made. Mm -hmm. um, especially nowadays, like, um, the printing on demand businesses, they actually doing everything in the DG, so you actually can advertise a shirt for sale and have just one of them printed, you know, so it's all on demand. So click it, buy, produce, right. ship. You don't have to buy like a thousand. Yeah, you don't need a minimum, you know. Screen mm -hmm. printing is different. You need a minimum because of the whole setup and the whole people working behind it, you know. Right. So it might get a little more expensive, you know, and should, should be it. Right, so I think Maybe to answer the question, Pape, I think DTG would, would pay for itself eventually. Yeah. It's good for small, small uh, setups. Mr. Director says red shirts are his favorite. Red, there you go. Nice. The one thing to work with black shirts is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, he said red shirt? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so red shirts are like, um, it's kind of hard like, to put colors in it. It's mm -hmm. one of those colors mm -hmm. like blue, depending on the color you use, it's gonna do that kind of trick in your eye. It's gonna yeah. vibrate. Yeah, vibrate, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, definitely. It it's depends a, how bright the red is or how what yeah. color the inks are. Sometimes like, I try to keep like also one color in the red, you know. Definitely. Yay, Jose, he made it, he got his submission in. You have 40 seconds, everyone, probably by the time you hear this. It will be less time. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's how that works. But basically, you've just got a couple seconds to get your submissions in. Please get them up as quick as possible. The challenge today was to make an illustration based on the idea of warm weather, which we all want to stay year round. And we have a color palette for you based off of Meg's work. Meg was streaming before with Alice. So she has really awesome, colorful work, and we stole some colors from her work. We're gonna give them to you. We have the codes for you. And all of the work for the submission so far look amazing. It's gonna be a hard decision, I think. I'm ready when you are. Okay, cool. Well, the deadline has hit. I'll wait until all of the submissions get in. Awesome. And we'll take a peek. Do, 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 do. What did you guys think of the challenge today, chat? Let me know if you liked it, the theme. 
good, bad. I like to hear your favorite challenges too. Do you have a favorite from the past? Maybe we can bring it back someday. Being cold here. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Stephanie. I know back in Ohio, I was seeing people's like weather app and it was like 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 70 <laughs> degrees, 80 degrees. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Uh, Rebecca, your submission should probably be a PNG or a JPEG. That would probably be the most friendly file format. What's up, Kimberly? Thanks for being here. Ooh, you have a little circle going on. Yeah, so basically the, I'm doing like a big sun. Oh, sun. nice. Yes, this is so retro. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I don't like the hard shapes. I like to flow with design, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna change a little bit. Alrighty. We have, I think, three submissions that we have not looked at yet. You let me know when you're at a good pausing point and we'll take a peek at a couple of these. I think it's a good time. Okay, awesome. So this is the one from Jan Eric. It's amazing. <laughs> this is Doug. This is me. Like Thanks, the beard. Jan Eric. <laughs> this is Gus. He's the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and this is Jan Eric. This is the USSB hands. This is a USB. LOL. Where's Paco? I know. Where's Paco? Is he the sun? Is he the thing that we all revolve around? <laughs> it's probably inside the bowl. Make it work. <laughs> yeah, you never see him. <laughs> he probably. And then this is Corel, <laughs> painter. That's awesome. All right, let's critique this. No holds barred. What do we think? I think it's funny. It's <laughs> so it's super funny. So if you don't know Jan Eric, he's a highly skilled uh. creator. This is he's joking. Oh, he's joking. This. Yes. <laughs> you got me. He got him. Uh, okay, uh, I think you got it. <laughs> nice. This is a fun one. Uh, you know. Uh, that's gonna be one of my goals, like get my son to draw one day and I want to put like in my office. That's like, awesome. Like his first drawing. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes me remind of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's funny. Same boat. That's awesome. USS Behance, the name of the boat. Behance. <laughs> the USB. That's amazing. You have your color palette over here. Thank you, Jan Eric, for using it. All right. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Let me refresh this really quick. Awesome. All right, this is by Claire. This is really almost psychedelic. Yeah, very psychedelic. Really nice drawing. Yeah. Cool, what could she do to strengthen this? Hmm. Hmm, I think uh, I like the idea of the butterflies kind of, you know, coming across and, you know, being in the background, being mm -hmm. close to the camera. Right. You know, and, uh, but I would say, um, Depending where you're designing this, you can blur them out a little bit and focus more on the girl Ooh, and the layer. Yeah. And I think you're gonna give the depth that you're looking for. Definitely, if you did a little Gaussian blur yeah. on these close-up ones, make it a nice kind of depth parallax effect. Exactly, yeah. I also feel like the layout of the butterflies could be a little uh, tighter. Yeah. Maybe take out a few of them, really place them in yeah. strategic places to help your eye move around. Yeah. Sometimes what people do is like the the ones that are like with the same layer of the girl, put more details into it, and the yeah. ones that go behind and make it a one color. Yep. You know, like just shade silhouettes, mm -hmm. like Kathleen said. Yeah, exactly. They're all kind of equally yeah. uh, designed. Although these ones do seem a little more complex. But overall, it looks good. Yeah, really nice use of the color palette. I enjoy it. Nice job, Claire. This is by Jose. Oh, there you go. Playing ball with his buddy. There you go, sunset right there. Some mm -hmm. waves breaking. Some good, nice, right breaking right there. My yeah, favorite. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and the, that's like, Whoa. that's, yeah, Huge. that's really big too. Um, <laughs> that's a perfect translation of a summertime. Like bring your dog, but you mm -hmm. know, the sunset, which probably the, the sun doesn't go down until nine o'clock in the mm -hmm. summer. So that's awesome. That's right. how, enjoy a good day of summer yeah 
So. I totally agree. I love this dark brown cloud. That's like not really something that you usually see. Yeah, really I like nice. the silhouette and the the, the shine details of mm -hmm. the sun hitting the edges. Yeah, the really nice rim lighting. Yeah, good so job. So cool. I also yeah. really enjoy how you've really cropped the shadow. Yeah. It's just kind of a hint mm -hmm. of it that makes it really believable. Yeah. Really nice. I think the only thing that I might say is for some reason, I feel like these dots are too big. Too big, yeah. Yeah, maybe they could be much more of a subtle texture. Yeah. Or even not even the dots in there. Maybe the dots, if you could make it like a little, it's lightly dark, the same color of the sand. Yeah, maybe not as dark as they yeah. are. Uh -huh. I'm gonna give a good detail for it. Yeah, really nice job, Jose. Yeah. As always, this is by Beck. <laughs> Christmas, summer in New Zealand. <laughs> That's awesome. At first, at first, I was like, why is this snowman naked. tan? Why is he naked? And then I was like, oh, he's made of sand. Yeah. I understand now. I think he's kind of like tan, actually, too. Right? Oh, yeah, he's a little burnt. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Good idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the little kiwi. Yeah. Cool. Similar dots as Jose had. Yeah. Cool, what do you think? How could, it, um, who was this again? I forget. Beck, make this stronger. Hmm. I think he, uh, there's some too many colors going on right there. Oh uh, yeah. You know, uh, if we keep like the design before with the dog, mm -hmm. it was super simple, like three, four colors, and you know makes the design flow together, you know, right, better. Um, and uh, again, see how the strong colors, like if you get straight out of the palette, if you don't choose like a, the right tone, it kind of doesn't go together. For example, like the green, it's like probably the you know, the Cali green, green. Yeah. And the yellow is the bright yellow, yellow. Yeah. You know, so you should have a tone depending on the time of the day. For example, that's a sunset. The, mm -hmm. the, the sun will be more orange, you know. Right. Just, you know, you want to kind of look, make sense your design, you know, just not just throw out there. But the composition, uh, I think it's on the right path. And uh, right. At the idea of the snowman being all burned, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well really nice I totally agree and we did provide a color palette to help help keep things cohesive so next time that'd be a great thing to use yep nice job let's make sure that we don't have any more that came in at the last moment awesome so I'm gonna curate down the total list of all of the submissions from this segment and maybe in about 10 minutes we will look at them you'll pick a winner and then we'll close everything out Sounds okay. good. Cool. Yep. So you have 10 minutes of work time. Alrighty. What are you going to work on? So I'm going to finish the sun. And I'm, like I was saying, I don't like the shape to be so hard like this, like mm -hmm. a circle on the background. Right. And that's some tips, like even you guys can use for the next projects you guys are going to be uploading. It's always cool like to kind of do everything hand draw. Mm -hmm. If you're using organic strokes, for example, like, you know, outlines, uh, you want to, you know, to look. Um, the strokes, and if you're gonna use a shape, it, it needs to be organic, it needs to flow right. well together. Right. So, you know, an example is like this, for example, I make it like a circle, but the circle is too perfect. I don't want it perfect. So, I delete it. Let's see here, I delete a little bit of the edges. You know, I wanna crook it, I wanna oval, you know. Oh, yeah. So I wanna kinda, you know, shaky. Totally. It's still believable, it still looks clean. Yeah, and then also like you don't want any hard right edges, like so don't go in a lot with mm -hmm. the, uh, the razor. Yeah. So it's better to go in and go out all the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no fall from the chair. Oopsies. <clears throat> Mr. Director says the sun head is my favorite awesome work. Yeah, that was by uh, Juan Camilo, I believe. He actually won earlier today. He made a really cool Shirtless man, pink nice. shirtless man, really nice. So then <laughs> once I'm done with the sun like that, um, I'm gonna, let's see here. I'm gonna make the sun a little smaller. Yeah. Atima's wondering what you think about Instagram and if it is good for artists. So, this is a good question. So, I I wasn't like a social media guy for so long. Gotcha. Um, 
but then be having like friends that was going strong on it mm -hmm. like artists and mm -hmm. they they told me like man you gotta you know uh, upgrade your game in there <laughs> so the, lately i've been upgrading my game so <laughs> i don't have any so like i said my portfolio is behance mm -hmm. and i don't have websites i don't have anything maybe i should i don't know um but also the instagram even on my uh, resume i put on my instagram mm -hmm. because i think nowadays you know it's important you be not only being an employee, but also being a product yourself, you know, you need yeah. to brand it, you need to sell yourself. So it's cool. It's cool to like show that you're an artist, you have a personal life and, you know, I don't have much followers, but you know, that's a good person, an artist that has like a whole community behind it yeah. will have more chances. So I think the Instagram is very valid as an artist especially with the stories nowadays that you can actually show behind the scenes, yeah. your daily, you know, your creative process. Mm -hmm. I think that's an amazing tool. Yeah, it's such a good way to make content if that's what you're into. I love Instagram. It's my, my social media yeah. of choice. And I totally agree that using your Instagram, if you want it to be professional, like it's not just you're like, oh, look what I had for dinner. Like if, yeah. if this has your work and it's part yeah. of your brand, I think it's really powerful to include when you're maybe going to be working with a client or they're maybe looking to hire. Can I can I share my Instagram with them? Oh yeah, well? of course. Yeah. So what's your handle? Yeah. So you guys can go Instagram.com slash forward Doug MG underscore, and you guys are gonna see that I start posting all my logos, all my illustration there, and um, I try to keep up very, you know, update here and there like every week or so yeah i've been even like updating with the with the uh, with the creative cloud lives in adobe live event mm -hmm. as well so i've been <laughs> branding a lot uh, yeah look at this that's amazing yeah <laughs> and i use that like for fresh stuff like follow me type of thing yeah so <laughs> that's awesome and you get to see a little bit of your family so we know yeah. that you're like a real person you're not yeah. just like a robot that posts designs. Yeah, it also like you don't wanna, you know, I feel like that's how I think. <clears throat> I might be wrong for depending on the approach you want, you're looking for, but I don't wanna be like a, like a business um, account, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanna be like this guy behind the machine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that does the work, not the, you know, basically don't let the, Instagram use you use the Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Heck yeah, it's just like Photoshop or Illustrator like don't yeah. let it control you you control it Yeah Yeah, everybody go follow Doug on Instagram. Thank you voodoo Val for posting that link. Mr. Director. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it yeah. <laughs> awesome so maybe in about three minutes we can look at the top choices and we'll pick a winner or five. We can do five minutes. All right. It seems like you're on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now, since it's in the background right now, I'm going to delete it, this guy. So for actually, yeah, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. I want a little gap. I don't want the sun to touch my guy right here. Right. Okay, so. Okay. Don't touch my guy. So you will make it the design stand out a little bit. So I'm going to go with the, the bumps, you know, I'm going to contour everything. Mm -hmm. All right, Ryan, you're getting out of here. Gonna go hit the road and sit in traffic. Have fun with that. Enjoy. One nice thing about my commute is that there's no traffic. I just sit on a train oh, nice. and I get to the place I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Anyone else who needs to leave soon, thanks for being here. But also anyone who this is their first time at Adobe Live, thanks for coming on over. I'm always interested to know uh, how you learned about Adobe Live. Did you just stumble across it on Behance? Did someone tell you about it? Let me know. How had you heard about Adobe Live? I was about to say, I actually found on YouTube though. Oh yeah, yeah I've uh, heard that too. Um, you know, I tried to follow the guys that, you know, the people that have a lot of influences mm -hmm. and then especially like Adobe has a lot of uh, tutorials. So then I found out that that was Adobe Live, mm -hmm. and you know, even the Adobe Adobe X convention, I will always want to be part of it. Right. Uh, never had a chance though, uh, so I kind of was following it that already. Nice. Yeah. You're in the know. It's good. 
Do you have any other hmm, ideas about how people can get inspired or any other resources that you recommend? Oh yeah, that's actually like a good point. Uh, lately, Behance has been like a very, you know, the go-to place mm -hmm. to find awesome references. True. Mm, it's crazy how like, uh, I use Pinterest a lot, but it's crazy how the Pinterest is are like redirecting to Behance, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so actually Behance, like there's, as a, a graphic designer, if there's some graphic designer out there, we will understand that fonts, man, so many awesome artists creating fonts out mm -hmm. there. Yep. And then free fonts that you can use for personal projects or, you know, if you use the right way, you can purchase them, you know. Um, yeah, Behance, the, my latest, you know, most useful tool I've been using for reference. That's awesome. Yeah. I totally agree. And as much as I've used Pinterest, I feel like I've literally seen every single image on Pinterest. Yeah. Like I've seen it all. It's been posted a million times. Yeah. Behance is awesome because it's all new. Yeah, Google is always always like a good um, uh, tool, but I think it changed a little bit now. Mm. When you do the image search, it's kind of like, copyrighted so we, you, it's hard to find the right image when you click oh, on it right 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 yeah um so but also like you just see you know it's like pinterest you see what's posted on the websites mm -hmm. that matters like yeah. enhance you know right i totally i use google when i'm looking for like if i had to draw the empire state building or like a cheetah like very specific things that i know there's a billion images of yeah that's what I use it for. But just to get like inspired by art, yeah, go somewhere else. You know, I was looking into Adobe Stock and then actually, like if you want a good shot, like an image that mm -hmm. is like artistic, mm -hmm. that's where you find it. Yeah, that we have some really awesome premium stock images, editorial stuff, really cool. If you haven't checked out stock before, it's really nice stock imagery. You can license it or you can just download a preview if yeah. you just kind of want to try it out before you would uh, buy it. You can sell it. Yeah, you can sell your work. Designer. And it doesn't have to be photos. You could sell your vectors, your vectors, icons. Yeah. Icons, yes. Uh, cool thing also, like if you're going to create like an image layer now, like you can actually pull from Adobe Stock right yeah. there. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Check that out. Awesome. Yes, Dribble. Dribble's awesome Dribble, too. Yes. Yeah, Dribble. You just got to be careful with it because at, on Dribble, it's just the top guys. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're gonna use it as a reference, probably like a lot of scene has seen it, but a lot uh, of people have seen it. So just use as like, you know, to motivate you, you know, inspire you. Yes. Don't, don't try to copy anything from there. No, because everyone else Never, will actually. know. Never actually, don't try to copy I mean, yeah, don't copy anyone anyways. <laughs> yeah. Too true, too true. This is awesome. I think this will look really strong printed on a shirt too, just because of the, some, you can get some imperfections printed mm -hmm. too, like none of them are the same. Yeah, that's, that's how I was thinking. <laughs> Mr. Director wants to know if you're inspired by the Illuminati. <laughs> Why, because of the composition? <laughs> he just says a lot of your work has strong references to it. Um, it's funny though. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm not, Yeah, but, you but I like the idea. So it's, it's kind of, you know, there's, yeah. there's a little bit into it, I would Definitely. say. Yeah. I think that's kind of a thing right now. It is strong, though, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Right, right. And that kind of propaganda, mm -hmm. also like Obey is very Obey. similar. Yeah. Looks cool. Good design. It's more like a reference because of how powerful it can be. Yeah. Uh, but also it can be like, a, a, you know, a criticism mm -hmm. a little bit. True. So we have three top options for the illustrations to win the challenge. Do you want to take a peek at them? Yes. Okay. I'm going to open this one too. Alrighty. So they're all uh, from different people. This is by Massimiliano. Really wild. And I really love how he used 3D shapes. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. We got Jose's playing on the beach at sunset really strong. We got this one. I forget who this is by. Let's see. Do, 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 do. This one's by Fad Young. Cute, nice use of half tones here. Yeah. And we've got the sad popsicle. We really liked how it was textural, but also very simple. 
Yeah. That, that one, like, it's kind of the idea of the design that I do. Mm -hmm. Like, the leaf I have. Yeah. Uh, I would probably make the, the popsicle kind of fallen into the sand and melting. Oh, yeah. Kind of, kind of dying on, up on the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know, a beached be whale. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the concept's pretty nice. Yeah, right? I do agree that you could even push this further. Yeah. Make it have a little more attitude because it's already it's already there. Yeah. Nice. Got this guy, these really cool trendy monstera leaves. Mm -hmm. Got Jose's dog and dude. And this really interesting abstract piece. Yeah. Any thoughts on a favorite? Yeah. yeah. Actually I had a favorite that's not there, but it's oh, fine. Yeah? Do yeah. you want to tell me which one it is? Um well it's one of the favorites, but uh, Oh okay. I like the I'm, I'm sorry that I had two favorites and one is there and another one is not. Okay. Which is this one right here. Oh yeah. 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 They won already. They won, right? Yes. Oh, okay, this is why. <laughs> but it's awesome that their work is really strong. So yeah, they good job on that up. one. Mm -hmm. We love the style. Yeah, always making great stuff. So I, my thought, in my personal opinion, I think Jose is the winner. Yeah, it's I really think strong. It's a nice kind of also a nice reference from the you know the endless summer type of thing. Totally endless summer. Yeah. Once you go like you know re, uh, rescue the you know the reference the past reference mm -hmm. it's kind of like you can't go wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought about when yeah. I first saw this. It's like, totally. Yeah. And just these little tiny details, the rim lighting, the shadows that are very kind of abruptly cropped, really nice. Even the shape of the waves, you said that that was your favorite. Yeah, I like when you keep simple yeah. like that, you know. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the color palette, it's perfect though. Yeah, really nice. Uh, Jose, congratulations. You are the winner of Doug's Stream Challenge. So Got a you, shirt, man. Yeah, congrats. So look on your Adobe or in your Behance messages. Adobe Live will message you. And as soon as we get these t shirts printed, one's coming your way. <laughs> Plus, you can't go wrong with happy animals. That's a valid point. Very valid point. <laughs> yes, totally agree. So congrats, Jose. Thank you so much for submitting. We've got just a couple minutes left. So maybe we can go all the way back to day one. Yep. You can talk through really quickly what you did and then what you did today and what you'll do tomorrow. Cool, sounds good. Um, so it seems like we're gonna have a little bit of homework today. <laughs> yes. uh, I didn't get to go through with all the colors, so tomorrow you guys are gonna see something more involved. Sweet. And I, Because I wanna have the designer ready tomorrow, okay? So day one, we start with the sketch mm -hmm. uh, until the, all the line work. Uh, keep simple, not too many details in it. Mm -hmm. Black and white, you know. And then that's when the, the idea was flowing a little, you know, start, what's, that's when I was kind of still deciding what I, w I was going to do. Right. Um, and then today, day two, we went uh, over all the little revisions and shading and, uh, and, and the colors. Mm -hmm. um, I, usually I do, a, you know, a pick and try uh, type of process uh, when I go with a color palette. Uh, but I got uh, anything, I got something in mind already, so I brought it with me today. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're gonna go with this vintage pastel color, which kind of translate the hap, it's more like a happy design, because yeah. since we're creating a monster already, so I don't wanna make like a creepy, scary monster. Yeah, yeah, too scary. Like if it's too scary, then Jose won't wear the shirt. Which by the way, guys, if you're seeing the color, it's it's a little bit different on my end, so it's a little more pastel. So it really is. So when it comes, when the shirt comes out, it's gonna look like really cool, really, really cool. I agree. Yeah. I can confirm. There you Looks go. really good. Yeah. Cool. So and then tomorrow. And then tomorrow we're gonna finalize the design better. Okay. Um, I have probably some uh, things and uh, techniques I'm gonna go over, talk about, you know, uh, which is our the opacities of colors, like Sweet. to create effect of more color design. Uh, you know, to give an illusion that you're using more colors, but actually using just a few amount of colors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're actually gonna transfer the design to the computer. Ooh, uh, we're gonna work on an illustrator mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna make a, the t-shirt, we're gonna mock up some shirts and add some uh, neck tag print. Um, cool. I'm gonna give some tips on uh, how make your shirts look a little bit more professional, more retail ready yeah. with the low cost, you know, uh, instead of going full on manufacture. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna work probably with Adobe stock, pull up some mock-ups, uh, templates, uh, PSD templates awesome. from there. 
and uh, that'll be it. I and think it'll it's, be it's over. Be fun. Yeah. yeah. So tomorrow's our last day here during our illustration week. Make sure you come back at 9 a.m. tomorrow here at be.net slash live. And if you'd like to learn more about Illustrator, come on over to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel at 6 p.m. tonight in one hour, and we'll be going over some basic tips. All right, everyone, go follow Doug on uh, Instagram, Behance, and we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you tomorrow.